This video is about the Generate Data Operator. This operator creates example sets that you can use to test processes. You can also use the example sets as an aid to understanding. We'll cover the main parameters to the operator. We'll look at the different types of example sets that can be created. We'll look at some sources of documentation to help you understand the details should you need it. Then we'll go through one of each of the main types, regression, classification, transactions, clusters, and a time series example. Start with the process. So a simple process, this is simply the generate data operator with five different types of example set being created. The order of these is as follows. So they run sort of up, up the screen to make it easier to understand the results without having to do too much clicking. So all I'll do is I'll simply run the whole process and then we'll just look at the outputs from each of these in turn. Before we do that, let's look at the parameters to the operator. Basically, the main, the most important parameter is this drop down here. And there are a large number of possibilities here. We'll look at some more detail of these shortly. For this one, I've picked square pulse function you you choose the one you want obviously once you understand a bit more about how they do it the number of examples parameter shows how many examples in the example set the number of attributes is simply as name as its name implies the number of attributes you can specify the upper and lower bounds of the attributes you can also override the the random seed that's provided by the system you might do that if you want to change how the data is generated. The final one, data management, that's an advanced one. I tend not to change that from the default. So I mentioned how do you get help for each of these items in this drop down? Well, I frankly, I just go to the code. So here in a file which is called example set generator.java which you will find on the Windows machine at this location which is program files rapid rapid, rapid minor 5 this is rapid minor 5 by the way I can't get access to the rapid minor 6 source uh, source com rapid minor operator generator example set generator.java obviously on Linux and Mac it will be different but basically the code looks like this so this is this essentially is all of the possible java classes that correspond to the entries on the drop down and you'll notice that there are they've been they've been grouped into regression classification uh, a single one for transactions some for clusters and one for time series so i propose just to pick one out of each of those five different types just so you can see what it looks like. We will also look at the code for each of the Java source files for the ones I pick so you can see how it calculates it. There is another source of documentation should you so desire. There is my blog, the shameless plug. Uh, the URL is here. I'm in the UK so it's basically one called generate data and I, I've spent some time un, uncompiling the source code so you can see for some of the, one, the ones that I have used in the past I've, I've tried to explain how the example set is generated from its attributes so of course I'm more than happy if you visit this site The parameters in general, sometimes the function, the target function here, needs different numbers of ex examples. Sorry, sometimes the target function will only work with a certain number of attributes, either a minimum or you can't go over a maximum. So, for example, if I set this to 2 in this particular case, you'll see over here the, an error flag. So, essentially, this target function expects 1 as the number of attributes. Generally it does a reasonable job of telling you what's going wrong. So without further ado let's run the process. So we should get five different example sets. The first one will be the regression one 
and it's the square pulse function. So if I look at the code, let's work out what it's doing, which is here. Basically, it's basically saying if um, it's divisible by two, if it's an even number, I guess, in, within a certain range, then set the label to be one or otherwise zero. So I guess the way to show that is to draw a picture. Sure enough, here it is. If I go to the advanced charts view, I've cheated and filled this in already, but I'm plotting at one as a function of label, or is it label as a function of at one? Anyway, you can see that when at one is a certain value, the label is zero, whereas if it's at another certain value, it's it's one. So this is quite an interesting. I suppose this is like a time series, but it is, you you use this for regression purposes. So a, a regression function would have quite a challenge to get that right. So that's the first one. Let's go back to the data view. Now the second one is, this is a classification uh, example set. So if we go back to the design view, this is doing a one-third classification. So I'm expecting to see, in this case, a label. So no longer is this a regression problem, so the label is no longer a number, it's now a a nominal value and it's taking on the value positive or negative. So if I go to the code for this one, here we are, it's basically saying it's comparing the first argument with point well, one third and if the, I guess, the argument attribute one is less than a third then the label will be positive otherwise it'll be negative. So if we look at the data here, I reckon Sure enough, so doesn't show it very well, but basically the one third is basically along this axis here. Let me zoom in. 0.333, so if it's less than that, it's positive. If it's greater than that, it's negative. So, so far, code's working. Let's go back to the transactions data. Now this is, if I refresh our memory, let's go back to the design view. This one was the transactions data set. If I go to the code for that, let's have a look. Transactions data set. This is really for association rules. So it's basically saying that argument one, which is attribute two, it starts at naught. So attribute two, if attribute two is one and a, and, and with an eighty percent chance, set argument three, attribute four, to one. So there'll be a relation between attribute two and attribute four. There'll be a relationship between. 1 and 2 as well as 1 and 3 and it's based on these random numbers so for association rules you'd, you'd be looking for some sort of link between the attributes with these probabilities you can sort of see that if we go back to the data view if we plot attribute 1 against attribute we should see that when attribute 1 is 1 attribute 2 is also 1 more often anyway, there's, there's some hint here that there's a relation and, and we could do others so let's go back to the cluster view so the clusters this generates uh, an n dimensional set of clusters with 2 to the n clusters itself the best way to view this is simply to look at the data so I've prepared a 3D scatter plot where at 1, at 2, at 3 are simply um, attributes and the label is colouring the points in and you can see there are, there are 2 to 3 which is 8 clusters, you can see them there and they look quite nice and I can move around like this, so this is quite a nice little test for k-means or similar clustering algorithms, you should be able to find those clusters with no trouble at all Find one time series. Refresh our memories about this one. Time series, it's a driller oscillation time series. Well, I didn't know what that was, so I looked at the code, and I have to say, I still don't know what it means. <laughs> However, it's quite interesting to plot it, so I guess if you really wanted to, you could spend your time understanding what this is doing. 
think it's to do with the failure of a drill bit and audio preceding the failure being different to the case where it doesn't fail which I guess is something you'd pick up but if I go to the data view for that and we'll plot say using the series plotter you can see here there's some sort of sine wave which is getting more and more higher frequency at a certain point so I guess at some point there's a failure So in conclusion then let's just go back to the design view and I'll just go through each one of these one by one and you can see the different target functions being selected and I'll go to the results view and just go through each one by one to act as a sort of summary should you need it.